Hello everyone, and I'm really excited to be sharing this project with you. Now this book has been a long time in the making. Not a long time to make it, but it was a workshop with the cool cats. So yeah, I finally got to meet Kay and Maggie and attend one of their workshops. Now we signed up for this workshop three years ago, but then a little thing called COVID hit. And so it did get postponed but it's finally happened. So managed to get away and go to their full day workshop and make a wonderful Cool Cats album. And I've got to say, if you get a chance to go on one of their workshops, do it. It was brilliant. The company was fantastic. I even got to meet um, some people who I've chatted with online before, but never actually met. So I met Carl Summers, David Mander, um, Sarah, Crafty Turn, Candice, Hi to you all, and a couple of my friends, Debbie, Judith, we all went and had a fantastic day. And I think we're all quite pleased with the albums we brought home as well. So I thought I'd show you a little walkthrough, and I'll show you at the end as well, a little tutorial as well for something I've added into mine, because we had so much paper left over, it seemed a waste. So I had to go make some extra uh, Paul touches to add into my book. So we use the um, Let It Be papers by Graphic 45. It was a nice um, MDF cover, so it's really strong. And we've got a nice ar uh, architect um, spine. Now, nobody on the day spotted, but this was meant to be the inside because the joins there. Managed to hide that from them all on the day. And then some more paper on the back. I think I've got some little bits I can add on, a little cut out something just to finish that off. And it's got a ribbon tie. You know, I never use my ribbon ties, but I really like them. Use some of the uh, perfect circles. So we've got a nice stitch detail to them. And Maggie, you'll be pleased to know I've even glossy accented some bits. So the bees on these tags do have some glossy accent and the bees on the cover. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but he's all glossy. And over here, we've got some more glossy bees. And I've got to say kudos to Maggie for the cover because the album itself, got a ruler here, is just over eight and a half inches tall, but we managed to make it using eight by eight papers. There was some really clever engineering going on there. And if I find some papers where I can do it, I think I'll be doing it again. So let's open it up. And like I say, the whole base we actually did make and decorate in the day. The only thing I did when I came home was the finishing touches, like the little circles and things like that. And some of the bat wing features which I've added in using the extras. So as you open it up, on the day this is what it looked like. So we have these paper bits which tuck in there, but this is something I've added afterwards. I've made, using the Cool Cats bat wing dies, one of my little note cards which hold three by four photos. I could do another one on the back actually and on the front. Um, when I got home, I remembered I actually had some of the Let It Be journal cards. So I've added that to the front as well. And there's a little curved photo slot tuck space. Now, if you want to know how to make one of these books, uh, booklets, I've actually got a tutorial already up on my channel. I'll link below. It's part of my Carl Summers tag book um, walkthrough. And I've just tagged the... Um, just tagged the tag book tutorial onto the end. So on the day we did, did make this bit with um, two ta uh, two pockets, and then this is something I've done afterwards with the papers we had left over because they were actually very very generous with the papers they gave us. Just notice I got a little piece of paper stuck there. I think I might have glued it down on the day. 
then the pages. I've got to say, the instructions were amazing. They showed us exactly where to cut our papers from, just like um, the regular tutorials that Cool Cats do. So if you haven't seen a Cool Cats um, album tutorial and their print out instructions, head over to their website, have a look at them, or head over to their YouTube channel as well. So we use some expandable dumbbells and the uh, pierced photo slots. So it's like a nice straight line. We reinserted the bit we um, die cut out. So if I bring it up, you can see it's just a nice thin um, strip cut into the paper with the nice pierced edges. But when you glue the top and leave the bottom without glue or leave it exposed, you've got a place to tuck your uh, cards and photos in like so. And these were just cut from the back of one of the papers. Then you open up your dumbbell and you had a flap and you had room for a six by four photo here. So this is again, one of the journal um, cards because I, I just happen to have a pack at home, but it fits a six by four photo instead. So anyway, when these journal cards are, you can replace them with a photo. Now a little sneaky peek, I said to you, I might add something onto the end of this video. Again, using the same battering dies that I used for these books, I've made this acetate photo pouch. So what you can do is take your battering tag die, put it onto your photo, send it through your machine, and you can slide it inside this pouch then and it'll just fit perfectly inside and you could take it out and change it but also because I've just used the cut up it it looks nice in your album when it's empty as well so hold on to the end of this video and I'll show you how to make one of these I'll add the tutorial to the end but again you could just put your photos straight in there so that's cut out with a six by four photo mat and then just magnet to close. Then we opened up here and we've got two pockets, one there and a shallow one there. Just tuck him back in. There we go. And again, we've used those three by four photo slots in there and on the day it was just a plain photo mat but it fits those journal cards nicely there so i thought I just finished off that page nicely there and again this is just one of the cut parts from one of the pages just tucked in there so if you haven't got the journal cards you can just use those instead now this is something i hadn't done before these are the page tabs the pentagon ones and more of our photo slots here and then these are magnetized and you lift both sides up and you had a pull out page so again loads more space for lots more photos and a pocket on the inside with another of my acetate pockets this time I did decorate the back and this is the one I'm going to show you um, how to make at the end of this video This bit was meant to be there. Shh. I did have to um, alter it a little bit because I cut one of the pieces the wrong size, but I think it worked out. Oh, and what I forgot to say is, I still haven't done them, but each of these pages you can fit is a pocket page, so you can fit um, a photo mat inside as well. So again, we've got a photo mat uh, possibly fit in there. And again, more photo slots, but this time the circle ones. So you've got this die, if you've got this die set to cut these, you've got this circle die, you can cut your photo straight out of your photo, um, your circle straight out of your photo, and you can tuck your photo straight into your album like that, and when you wanna change it, you can. And again, we've got another deep pocket here. 
Now this page was the challenge one. So thank you for this one, Maggie. Love the little slider. So this little circle slides up and down. So once it's down, it keeps the page in place, lift it up, clears the space, and it opens up. So we've got another of those straight um, photo slots here with a piercing. See, it's so well camouflaged, I don't think a camera would even pick it up. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think you can just about see it there. But you could leave it with the black um, cardstock showing through so it's more visible, but we did reinsert them there. And again, another one of those cards from the paper pack just cut out. And it was a diagonal page with some more pockets inside for more items, but also you had space behind as well. So once that uh, it's down, it locks. So I did sneak this out of this page. Let's put it back in before we open it up. And the catch-up page. This gave us a little breather. It was just, if I take them all out. This is one I think Maggie does most of albums where you just swap over the middle pattern and it just works nicely. And it's just four pockets. And it just gave you a little breather after trying that page. Again, I got some of the journal cards. And this then is just the straightforward batwing tag. Just cut with the biggest one and the mat and lay on both sides with a photo slot for three by four um, stuck on. Now I'll show you how to do that, how I do that in the tutorial following this video. Yes, yeah, so if you want to see that, just hold on a little bit. Another journal card. Another one of the Batwing, just plain tags. And a journal card. And then the last page is um, a little pocket here. Again, just enough face six by four photos. And a little, nice little swivel there. And you pulled it back, and this time it was actually stuck down the middle. More photo spaces and a pocket here as well. So we can put some more. Now this is actually um, just some waste from when I was cutting some other tags. So the black was the um, waste from the inside and I just cut another one from a little piece I'd left over, which fits exactly the same size because this was the matte and layer one, not the tag one, the bigger one. So it was a shame to waste it. So I just made a tag with it. And again, just another of the Graphic 45 journal cards. So you can see the front page, also the inside covers on both sides are just mirror images of each other with two pockets this side and then two pockets this side. And so that was my Cool Cats Workshop album, which I absolutely loved making. We had so much fun, lots of fun and laughter, and I probably weighed an extra two stone coming from there, just from the cakes and the food they kept on bringing out, which was also amazing. So thanks for watching the album walkthrough. Uh, I hope you liked it. And as I said, if you get a chance to go on a Cool Cats workshop, go for it. If not, their YouTube channel has amazing videos where you can build an album from scratch um, and they have step-by-step, day-by-day videos as well. And if you contact them, you can get um, printable instructions as well or buy the kits in their shop. You'll find all the links you will need in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. And as I said, this isn't the end. I'll have a tutorial coming up. But if you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button as well. It really does mean a lot. And remember to share some comments below as well on what you thought of this project. So thanks for watching and enjoy the tutorial. So welcome to the tutorial part of this video. Now, if you've seen my video for the Cal Summers tag book, 
you'll have found a tutorial attached to that, just a quick one, showing how to make a little notebook uh, tag book using the Batwing tag dies. And I'll link to the video for this one in case you wanted to make one of these. So you've seen it in the book. If you want to make one, just head to the description below. So for this one then, I thought I'd try something different. I'm going to show you how to make the acetate fronted pocket using exactly the same dies. So you've already got them because you like this one, just something new to do with them. And I know a few people bought them at the workshop as well. So in case you haven't seen, and again, I'll, I'll link to these dies below. These are the Batwing tag dies. Now the Batwing uh, collection in Cool Cats is a bunch of dies with the same curved pattern on them all. So you've got belly bands and um, the whisker dies to make your pocket edges and things. And it just means that the whole collection will tie in and match. So if you get the tag dies, what you get is a large tag. And it is large. It's uh, over five and a half by nearly five and three quarters. And you get this one, which is just slightly smaller. And what that allows you to do then is to have a nice even mat and layer all the way around when you make a tag. But then you also get exactly the same, so two dies, your main and a mat and layer to make a medium one. And you get two small ones as well. So you get six dies in total, so you can make all the different size tags. And of course, the easiest way is just to cut a tag, cut, a matte layer, stick them together and put them in. And you've seen that in the book as well. So the one I'm making today is gonna to be using the large and the medium. I won't be using the small, but you can equally make a medium tag by using the small dies in exactly the same way. I'm also going to use my curved photo slot. And this is from set one because it's the one that fits a three by four. And as you can see, I used it on this one. You can see the curves there. This is one of the three by four journal cards from Graphic 45, and it just fits perfectly inside. But you do get a little matte and layer one as well. So you can make your own little journal cards. And I've cut one ready here with some nice stitching around the edges. So you can stick it on there and then put it in, you can have a nice black border as well, probably show it better in the coloured ones. So I'm gonna use that as well on this book. So let's put that away for now. And let's move these away. And I'm just gonna keep for a moment the largest one. Now they're quite close, so I need to make sure they we have that one. So to begin with, whatever colour card base you want, you need to cut two of the largest ones. So I've already done that ahead of time. I'm using my Platinum 6 machine. So, you know, you don't need a big machine to make these. I've got some low tack tape. I've got some of the scraps from my album. So I'm going for this. Um, nice red one with the bees from the letter B again. And I've already cut this as well because it was a little bit too thick. You want some thin acetate. And I've cut that from the one that's slightly small, from the matte and layer one. So I'm gonna put that to side for now because I don't need it. I'm gonna start off with my two black ones. So they're gonna be stuck together back to back. And because they're from the die, they both cut this way, but they're symmetrical, they'll match perfectly. And I'm gonna put one to the side because I want to do my paper cutting first. So I'm going to bring in one of my pieces and my matte and layer. And I'm going to use my tape and I'm just going to add the tape 
on the outside. My dad, let's get it a bit straight because there is wording here. Let's see if I can get it a bit straighter. I'm using the left hand side, I think that's the straightest line. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is go to my medium ones. And I want the larger one. So that's this one. And I'm going to tape that in the middle. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Again, use some low tack tape. And I'm just going to center it. And I'm going to put the tape in the middle this time. But it doesn't matter if it crosses over. And as I said, I got my Platinum 6, very well used plates here. And I'm going to send it through the machine. There we go. And as I take it off, what we'll have is a nice border and a centerpiece, like so. So on my original one, I had the pattern just continuing in. But there's nothing stopping you then putting this that way if you've got a nice reverse. But I think because we've got a pattern, I'm going to have it like that again. I'm just going to place this where I'm going to stick it later on. And I'm going to take now that smallest uh, of the medium tags and I'm going to place it within that window. And take some of the tape. I'm going to tape it into place. And carefully, without moving it, take that one off. Now, let me just take some of the tape off these ones. I don't want it moving, so I'm going to tape it down pretty well. And I'm sending it through my machine. There we go. So when I take that off now, I'll now have an aperture. where that border will fit onto nicely. But I'm not gonna glue it down quite yet. I've still got a little bit, a couple more steps I wanna do. Now, when you die cut, you get that nice beveled edge. That is the front for me. This is the back. So I'm gonna work now on the back. And I'm gonna place my aperture one on top. And I'm just going to quickly draw, don't need to be neat or anything, it's just going to be a guide. That centre. Because what I'm going to do then is be able to line that onto there. In fact, let's do that now. Now, bearing in mind, you are going to be sliding a photo over this. So you want to make sure, especially at the top, that you've taken the glue right to the edge because you don't want your photo trying to go behind. Uh, what's in the middle? Now you're not going to see because that aperture is a little bit smaller than this, but it's just going to act like a guide for me. So I'm lining up my left and right and just going to lift it up a little bit. Well, actually, I hadn't thought about this before. I could just use this as a guide, couldn't I? But there we are. That might be a little bit easier. Let's just put that there and place that down. There we are now. We've got a perfect one. So ignore that pencil tip. <laughs> that was much easier. I don't know why I hadn't thought about that before. Okay, let's just, whilst that's drying... Let's just give this a little bit of distress ink around the edge. So 
So if you wanted to make a smaller version of this, that's all you'd be doing now is doing this three steps using the medium for the outside and the small for the aperture parts. Let's just add some to the inside as well. And the last little line. There we go. Okay. So before we start assembling, of course, we need to add our acetate piece. So here we go. Now, I tend to use tape for my acetate. Yeah, this is the back. So let's... Have a look, let's place this. Now this will be a little bit smaller than your um, black piece because we use that matting and layering one. And by doing this, I'm just making sure that I'm not gonna have any showing in the middle of the aperture. You want it up to the edge here, but you don't want it going into that space. And that's even more important on this bit here. So the straight bits, you can just go on the edge, but I'm sort of trying to work it so it's not going to show anywhere except behind the black. There we go. And now I can just peel off the double tape, side of the tape. So this is the back of your die cut, making sure. And as I say, it's only slightly smaller. There we go. And now I'm just gonna burnish it well on. And you'll see this, the double sided will actually change color. The show is really stuck down. Well, and the tape I'm using is also from Cool Cats. It's their uh, really strong pro tape, sticky paws, and it's really good for that. So now I need the back and the front and it's time to attach them. Now because the Cool Cats have this amazing um, tiger tape, I'm going to be using this. If you haven't got this, what you can do is get a stripper card and cut it at one inches wide. Use your scoreboard at half an inch and make a construction strip. And you can attach that then here and there. I just find the tape works brilliantly and it's what I use for my album, so it's great to have another use for it. So let's have so I'm going to take my tape from the top of the decorative edge bit here to the bottom. And find my scissors. Here we go. I'm just going to cut it off straight there. And I'm going to take my... Aperture layer, place it on top and fold it over. Now I've got a bit of overlapping tape there because I wanted it up to the edge, so I'm just going to trim off that tape from there. So now I've got full contact there. I'm just going to do the same to close the aperture. So I'll start at the top where the decorative strip begins down to the base and just cut it off. 
So make sure it's all lined up and fold it over. So what I've got, I've made sure is that I haven't got too much tape coming round to the front. So I've got a wider bit on the back than the front because you don't want it coming over that aperture. I'm just going to burnish it. And this time, I'm just going to do it across the front. There we go. And fold it over. So that's your pocket now sealed on those three sides. And what you'd do then is with your photo, you take that decorative matte one. Yeah, this is the one. And if you cut your photo out of this die, they would just slide in perfectly into that pouch. Then we're just going to add some glue to our paper frame. And it'll just stick on there and you've got that continued pattern following through. So now I've got an extra pouch now to pop into my album. So I can just put my photo inside there. But also we've got some space on the back. So let's bring in our aperture one again, uh, our decorative one from the large one. So this is the one which will cut the paper just slightly smaller than my tag. I'm going to use some of my tape again. Let me get it straight. And as I said before, you, I'm going to use my photo slots. So I'm going to place that in the middle and again just reuse this tape rather than use any more. Let's place it in the middle. So you could do this separate but the nice chunky dies you can do them both together because there's enough space and as long as you've taped them they're not going to overlap. So here we go, one and two. As I showed you earlier, you've got a die which will cut a photo mat to go into there. If you remember, I had it behind this three by four um, journal tag. I'm going to just distress in around my tag. And the reason I've got this cut out is I like to have this in when I'm gluing because it helps to train the paper around this bit to be raised, ready to take your, uh, take your photo. If you stick it in flat, then you'll find it difficult to lift these bits to get your photo in at a later date. So it's just holding the place for now. And it also shows me where I do not want to take my glue anywhere near those bits. So I'm going to go around the edge, not going anywhere near those black bits and down the middle. Uh, let's just glue that one down. Use my Teflon tool again, another Cool Cats uh, tool. And then your three by four photo. Straighten it out, can go in there, obviously with or without that black mat. Because the advantage of not sticking onto that mat is you can still journal on the back with these gorgeous graphic fortified cards. With a photo, I'd probably glue it on. 
Here we go. And there we have your acetate pouches that'll go into your album. And again, if you're using the other uh, bat wing styles, then your whole album will come together nicely. It'll have this um, cohesion going all the way through. So we've got tags, we've got acetate fronted tags. And as you saw in the book earlier, which I haven't got it, the tag with me now, you can have just this as a plain tag as well. Just put some holes um, there with an eyelet and you can just have a normal tag as well. So hopefully I've shown you how versatile those tag dies can be and what you can use those little scrap bits from the end of your project to make some additional drop-ins. So thank you for watching. And if you do have a go at making uh, some of these ideas, I'd love for you to share with me in my Facebook group called Paper Crafting with Paul. I'll add a link in the description below. And please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already done so. It really does mean a lot and does help my channel to grow even further. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon.